Welcome, everyone. We're going to get started in just a minute. All right, Lisa, you want to get us started? I will. Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Hello, Be Curious folks. Hello, Certified B Corporations and hello, Benefit Corporations. Welcome to the first event um, of Be Local Wisconsin in the 2022 year. My name is Lisa Giesen Bauer, and um, I'm the co-chair of this of Be Local right now. And it is my pleasure to give you kind of a little frame out of today's event. So first of all, we'll start with some housekeeping because that's always the most important thing to start these events. So we're all real clear. First of all, the event is being recorded. Right, so you are all being recorded. Um, post the event, we will be sharing a recording with all of the attendees, as well as with, um, we're gonna be posting this uh, webinar on our Be Local Wisconsin website. Second thing, um, we're asking if you have any questions to please put them in the chat. Realize though that whatever you put in the chat, everybody will see. So if you have a question that may be more of a sensitive nature, please feel free to direct message it to me, Lisa Giesenbauer, through the participant chat, and then I can bring that question up um, today. And the next thing is, if you are somebody who would prefer to use um, the live transcription feature, which is the closed captioning, there is a button on the bottom of your screen that says CC live transcription, and you can turn that on. Um, the host has enabled it, so you can put requests there, and we will give you permission to do the use your event today through um, the closed captioning feature. Oh, and the last thing is that everybody is on mute, and we are hope that you will stay on mute um, throughout today. Again, we will be having many times throughout today's program where you're able to ask questions. Please, again, put your questions into the chat, and then we will be calling on our different B Corps who are present to answer those questions. I think that is it. Super excited to begin today. I'm going to turn it over to Mary now. Thank you, Lisa. You can see our smiling faces on the slide here. Uh, everyone who's participating in um, this today's event. So Lisa August Ball, Sarah Lassar, myself, Mary Saltello, and Melina Marcus. And I'm going to actually start with just a little bit of a what is the B Corp movement? And we're going to have a little, we'll have more detailed information about the process of certification um, at the end of the program. But I, I wanted to just start with, uh, you know, where did this all start and how did it come to be and where are we now? So just a couple minutes on this. And that back in um, sort of 2007 or 8 when the movement started, um, the founders of B Lab, uh, Jay Cohen and Andrew um, and uh, Bart Houlihan, um, were really looking at how do we change the movement of business in moving from focusing on single bottom line of profit to a more stakeholder approach to um, business and how business could really be a force for good. And so the, the movement really started to see the evolution over the last 20 or more years to look at how do we look at business with more than a single bottom line, but more of a quadruple bottom line. So really looking at people, planet, purpose, and profit. And so those were really the foundational elements of moving towards the B Corp movement and what was really compelling for, for the founders of B Lab and the B Corp certification. And we're really seeing more and more of that traction now. So it's not just looking at um, good products, but really looking at good companies and that consumers are really pushing for good companies, not just good products. So the B Corp certification is really looking at that certification of a business as a whole. And it's similar to what fair trade is to coffee or lead is to building, but is comprehensive certification process for companies to really acknowledge 
their commitment to stakeholder um, um, impact and stakeholder um, well-being. So where are we now? In, in the 12, 15 years or so that B Corp, that B Corp movement has been in process, we are now uh, globally more than 4,600 certified companies, and it is a global movement. 79 countries in, one, in 150 different industries and sizes of organizations, really starting from sole proprietors to multinationals, but it is this one unifying goal of business being a force for good. And as I said, we will be uh, digging deeper into the details on you know, what does certification look like, what's that process, later in the program. Um, I'm excited to make the transition to uh, learning um, about each of the women-led certified B Corps on this program. We're gonna tell you a little bit about the why in their business and what helped them make that decision to make this transition to um, certified B Corp. So I'm gonna turn it over to August Bell. Thanks everybody. Hi, thanks everyone. Um, my name is August Ball, and I'm the founder and CEO of Cream City Conservation and Consulting. We are uh, located on the ancestral lands of the Potawatomi and Menominee people here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, hence we've named uh, our company after uh, Cream City. Uh, next slide, please. So, we are um, a two-pronged social enterprise. Um, I am an accidental entrepreneur. I, I got my start working in the conservation sphere over 10 years ago, actually about 15 years ago now, um, and fell in love with promoting um, connection to the land, but also connecting young people to nature. And while I love doing that work through a nonprofit, I realized that sometimes philanthropy can be part of the problem. So uh, we prepare young people, predominantly of color, for careers in the environmental industry. We do this through urban agriculture, through green infrastructure, um, through climate science awareness, as well as policy advocacy um, and uh, land stewardship, like tree planting, invasive species removal, and trail building. Next slide, please. Before the pandemic, we also uh, promoted career opportunities through our annual Youth Green Job Summit, which is unfortunately on hold right now. Now, because we are not a non-for-profit, uh, our programs are funded solely through profits from our consulting work. And one of the uh, one of the things that drew me to um, to this work is that I noticed over time in working in the conservation sphere that. I oftentimes was the only woman and also the only person of color uh, in key decision-making rooms. And I knew logically that that didn't quite make sense. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that as I built out my business, I also helped support other environmental organizations in establishing a culture where all could thrive. Next slide, please. So how my B Corp functions uh, is we do consulting work through one-on-one -on -one, uh, education with our clients, as well as our cohort program, which engages up to six different organizations every quarter in doing assessments of their organizational culture and racial equity, uh, putting their entire staff through a series of seven various workshops to build shared language around racial equity. And um, we then end with creating a roadmap with the clients so that they can implement these new changes around culture for their organization. Um, so the profits from that work go to support um, and offset the cost of our conservation work that supports our public lands. And the reason why B Corp is so important to me is that I always had this kind of negative connotation about business, uh, but learning about B Corp helped me realize that um, I could have control over um, what how our dollars were spent. And one of the key takeaways I, I realized from being a part of this community is that money is neutral. It's what we do with it that gives it power, that gives it value, that gives it meaning. Thanks. And I'll turn it over to uh, Lisa Giesenbauer. Thank you, August. Um, next slide, please, Mary. Okay, hi. So uh, as I said, my name is Lisa Giesenbauer and I'm the president and founder 
of Evolution Marketing. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today about purpose and passion and how that equals impact. And as the MC for today, I might be bringing back some quotes and some additional data on purpose because the reality is in today's day and age, in February of 2022, everyone in the world, doesn't matter where you work or where you live, is talking about purpose. And um, I think part of that is because of what's happened coming out of COVID. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about Evolution Marketing. Uh, we are a woman-owned micro business. We were founded in 2007 in Waukesha County, and we are a mission-based for-profit business, and we have been operating underneath the umbrella of what's called the triple bottom line. So that means that we run all of our business decisions through the lens of the impacts of our business on people. So that could be our employees, that could be our communities, and that could be our clients, as well as the environment. And then lastly, through um, is this financially a viable option? We are we were one of nine businesses, oh, go back, Mary. We were one of nine businesses um, back in 2009 to pilot the Green Masters program, which was being developed um, as the B Corp movement was beginning and coming into Wisconsin. And the Green Masters program is very heavily involved in looking at um, attribute, environmentally responsible attributes your business can be doing. And so we were in that program for a very long time. And at our 10 year anniversary, which was in 2017, we decided, you know, we've been meeting our mission, which was to show that a, a small private service business could operate in a triple bottom line manner. And we decided that, you know what, we needed to have some third party verifications because it, up until that point, it had been Lisa and members of my team saying that we're doing these good things. And so we joined 1% for the planet in 2017 and they actually audit us every year to make sure that we're giving back at least 1% of our sales to environmental nonprofits. In 2018, we became a certified B Corp, which is again, a third party who verifies our entire way we operate our business. And then in 2019, we joined um, Carbon Free as their small business partner program, which means that they actually look through um, our carbon footprint report every year. And we also publicly disclose that so that we are able to say that we're operating our business in a carbon neutral manner. Next slide, please. It's important for us to talk about all of these things and to showcase in a public and transparent manner that we're doing these actions because of the type of business we are. Um, we also redid our mission in 2017. And our new mission is live responsibly, work by example, lead by design and educate through action. And so with that, we also reframed, because again, we'll be 15 this fall, how we talk about the services that Evolution Marketing offers. And what you can see on this slide, I'm not gonna read it for you, but this is how we talk about our services. Basically, basically, we are a sustainability consulting firm first and foremost, and after we've helped our clients with sustainability projects, we then help them to communicate in an open and transparent manner the actions that they are taking. So again, we're very unique in the work we're doing, and we also really want to make sure that the work we are doing with our, for ourselves and for our clients can be verified, because again, <laughs> we're in this age of what I like to call uber transparency. Next slide, please. So a little bit more about our clients. Here is um, uh, an image from our recently released 2018 to 2020 social impact and giving report. And as you can see on this slide, the majority of our clients are either nonprofits or they're women owned businesses, or they are, as you can see, benefit corporations or certified B corporations. So as you can see, we're really working in this space, um, in this environmental Lisa, are you with us? <laughs> I'm not sure if we're hearing. Lisa, are you with us? Uh, this is Mary. So it looks like Lisa just lost power. So we're going to jump ahead and hopefully you can still see still and hear me. Back. Oh, that's awesome. I just okay, lost you're power back. In you're my back. house. I'm actually having solar panels. Now we hear right you. Now. Awesome that you can still see and hear me. Um, I will keep going with my talk. I don't know what happened, but my computer froze up. So, and I lost power to it. 
Um, anyway, so <laughs> evolution marketing, we're actually having solar panels installed right now, and I've got contractors working in my basement. So I don't know what they did, but they clearly did something to my screen because I can't see you anymore. Um, anyway, let's go on to <laughs> just keep going. Okay, let's go on to whoever is following me. I think it's Sarah who is next in the presentations. Yes, Sarah is next, so we'll hand it over to her. And um, thanks, Lisa, hanging in there. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, and um, yeah, um, pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, my name is Sarah Lassar. I'm the Director of Operations at Invest Microfinance as well as the co-chair of Be Local Wisconsin. And unlike the other wonderful speakers on this call, I did not found my company. I've been with Invest um, for about three years, almost three years, um, in maybe three years in May. Um, my colleague, John Bishop, who is on this call, uh, founded Invest in 2006. And I believe some of my other um, awesome colleagues are on the, the call as well today. So um, I'll give a little bit of background on Invest Kind of what we're up to now and um, kind of how that fits um, into the B Corp journey and our B Corp um, certification. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. Um, so yeah, um, going into a bit of, I guess, um, my, my colleague John's background, um, he is a trained ecologist and really was passionate, um, is passionate about the environment and uh, creating a sustainable world and really saw poverty as a huge impediment to a truly sustainable world and sustainable economy. Um, so um, early in the early 2000s, he um, was working in microfinance and decided to start Invest in 2006 to use market-based mechanisms um, to, create, um, to create this more equitable, sustainable economy, um, I guess, blending microfinance and the capital markets. Um, and I can explain a little bit about how that looks like um, on the next slide. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we'd like to, we like to say at Invest, we're trying to bridge the gap between capital markets and microfinance. Um, so what that looks like is we raise investments um, from investors into a pooled investment fund. And a lot of our work is then um, in finding and researching and getting to know um, microfinance institutions all across the world um, to begin long-term lending relationships with them. Um, we emphasize small institutions um, that are often overlooked by traditional creditors due to you know, their size or their you know, supposed geographic risk. Um, but we um, really do the due diligence to really see, you know, are these risks manageable? And um, we often see that these small institutions are um, very strong and are doing a great job in their communities um, with serving this credit. Um, so yeah, we want to see that, that local leadership often um, within these small institutions, um, they really know, you know what their community needs and um, how, to, how to best serve their communities. So kind of our process is you know, doing that work, um, analyzing the institution, but then kind of stepping out of the way and um, you know, allowing them to make business decisions that are appropriate for them. Um, part of our niche is also um, finding institutions with social missions. Um, a lot of our partners serve predominantly women. Um, many lend for sustainable technologies, such as the solar panels that you see um, in that bottom left picture. Um, and really just, we want to get to know that they're not just, you know, a financially strong institution, but they're truly, um, Serving a, um, you know, serving a need in their community and truly being a partner within their community. So we're currently working with 19 partners. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, 11 partners in or 11 countries, 19 partners really across the world and we're continuing to expand that. So um, that this these pictures kind of show what we're up to in that way. Um, how that fits in with B Corp, um, if you move to the next slide, um, no worries, August. Um, and how that kind of fits into our B Corp journey, you know, B Corps are really, you know, as Mary talked about, we're businesses trying to serve a, for, a force for good. Um, 
and really invest has, has done that from the beginning, um, you know, using those market-based mechanisms um, to help reduce worldwide poverty. Um, so even though our current certification um, began in March, 2020, however, our B Corp journey has been um, longstanding. We actually um, were certified about 10 years ago um, and really a lot of the motivations for certification um, are um, both to kind of meet the demand of the socially responsible investing community. Um, this certification means a lot to um, a lot of our industry and really helps us stand out in that way. But we've also gotten to know um, a lot of other um, businesses through Be Local Wisconsin across industries, um, which has been incredibly helpful just in um, you know, planning out how we want to use the certification and then also just um, expanding our network, learning from each other and kind of having a support system, especially in these last two years um, during the pandemic. So we're um, super happy to be a B Corp and um, excited to continue growing um, in this journey with you all. Um, so feel free to head to our website or email me if you'd like to learn more about NFEST. Um, I think I will now pass it to Mary Stella Tello of Vista Global Coaching and Consulting. Thank you, Sarah. I'm like um, moving a lot of things around here, being the technology person and now uh, presenting. So hello, everybody. Welcome. It's great to be with you. Um, again, my name is Mary Stella Tello. I'm uh, principal and founder of Vista Global Coaching and Consulting. And I'm actually calling in, uh, connecting today from the native lands of Oaxaca, Mexico, from the Zapotec people where I spend the winters working. Um, in the rest of the year, while I'm in Wisconsin, my company is based in Madison, which is the native lands of the Ho-Chunk Nation. So I am um, really uh, excited to, to, to offer you a little bit of my journey. Um, I actually was a 20-year nonprofit leader. Um, I spent the first 20 years of my career working in um, the area of children and youth services. So I ran a lot of different organizations that supported children and uh, families um, and, um, and youth, um, runaway and homeless youth, children in the foster care system, and also spent some time working internationally with um, a foundation that supported youth development globally. So my um, career path was always focused on doing work that supported positive impact and making a difference in the world. And I transitioned out of that um, direct service work uh, in about 2007 and started to work as a consultant for a national consulting firm um, in California. And that's when I first heard about the B Corp movement and B Lab in that, um, that there was really a blurring of the, the do good sector and that you know, the nonprofit sector really couldn't uh, hold the um, corner on the market of doing good um, in the world. And so um, when I transitioned out of working for the national firm, I really wanted to demonstrate my values of social impact and um, making a difference in the world through the company, through my company values. And, you know, as a solopreneur, when you start a business, you are, your values are your business. And I really felt that um, the, the B Corp movement really aligned with the values, uh, my own personal values and the values of my business. So connection, um, equity, positivity, um, diversity. And um, so my, I started my consulting firm um, to offer consulting services to nonprofits and socially minded businesses, as well as coaching for individuals that want to make a difference in the world. So we, um, the firm started in 2010. And because I had known about the B Corp movement and B Lab, um, I, as soon as my company was eligible, I went through the certification process in uh, 2012, and um, Vista Global was certified as the uh, B Corp in Wisconsin, and now is the longest certified B Corp in Wisconsin. Um, so we 
um, we're in the middle of our fifth certification process right now. Um, and it, it's um, really been a journey in understanding how B Lab commits, has really committed to the rigor in um, uh, making sure that companies are demonstrating um, the actual policies and practices to meet the certification. So um, I certified because I really wanted my, um, the, my clients to know that my business was aligned with the principles that I had personally. And the majority of my, the clients that work that um, this global supports are nonprofits um, doing organizational development, capacity building strategy and mergers um, between nonprofits and um, also board governance work with nonprofits. Um, in the coaching work I do um, with leaders across all sectors, but really is committed to leaders who are um, wanting to make a difference in the world. And one of the motivators for um, certifying, not only just to demonstrate the alignment with um, my personal values and my company values was to, um, there are benefits to, um, to uh, certified B Corps. And at the time of certification, um, you know, larger um, businesses offer discounts and services. So at that time, um, in 2012, um, Salesforce Foundation offered a significant discount to their um, CRM license so that um, small businesses like B Corps um, could uh, engage with um, sales, Salesforce and, and really get started with their um, managing their contact relationships um, in, a, in a robust management system at a price that was accessible um, because uh, my company was a B Corp. You also see there's a process that um, talks about best for the world. And what that is, is um, B Lab identifies um, the top 5% of those certified um, B Corps in, different, in the different five different categories, governance, community, environment, customers, and overall to acknowledge those that um, have uh, reached uh, the score um, that is in the top 5% of all those types of businesses in that particular category. So my company has been in the best for the world for five years and the last um, time was last year in 2021 under the customer focused category. And I think we are um, our last speaker who's going to be talking about her business, uh, Rebel Green. I'm not sure if Melina's joined us yet. Lisa, is she here or Sarah? If not, we're going to skip to Q&A and then we'll come back to um, Melina if she hasn't joined us yet. I, I don't believe Melina is here yet. And I um, just put okay. a note into the Q&A. Um, so everyone who's listening, please send us over your questions about purpose in business and or any questions you may have about any of the businesses that have spoken so far. Um, once Melina arrives, she had a prior engagement. We will get to hear all about Rebel Green and I can probably also answer a lot of questions about them if you have them as well. Um, well, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have each of our different, um, I'm going to kind of be the MC and I'm going to field questions for each of our different uh, speakers. So as you all think about questions, um, I would like to hand, I'd like to ask, um, oh good, Darren, thank you. Can you be specific about the benefits of being a B Corp? This is great. And uh, um, Sarah, you had touched on this. I'd like you to talk a little bit more about how being a B Corp has helped your company, customer service and impact. And then um, after Sarah, we will keep going. If there's more, more questions, others can speak about this as well. Sarah, to you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, I think just generally touched on this. I think part of you know the reason for certifying was just, um, I guess, in the our industry, the socially responsible investing industry, um, a lot of companies have this and it has become kind of, um, you know, something, I guess, um, that people want to see in this industry that we're really doing, I guess, what we're say, what we say we're doing. Um, but I think further than that, um, it really just helped us, especially as a small business, um, going through the certification to realize kind of really looking at our business from a, I guess, a high level um, at our policies at kind of, I guess, even, you know, the structure of 
you know, how we run day-to-day -day things all the way to our, you know, our board structure and governance. Um, really um, doing the assessment helped us, you know, I guess think about how we're answering these questions and helped us develop more policies and um, added some structure around some of the things we really didn't have, I guess, um, as a small business. Um, and I think that will help us, um, I guess, as we um, you know, continue to grow, invest, and, and to recertify um, to have those policies in place. Um, That's wonderful. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, I'm now going to ask August to answer the same question, seeing as you just completed um, Cream City's um, B Corp certification in December, right? So August, Great. share your insight and experience. Yes, absolutely. So I personally was looking for an alternative to being a 501c3 or a nonprofit. Um, I didn't want to be dependent on philanthropy. And so much to Sarah's point, going through the B Corp process allowed me to take all of the practices that were in my mind, as I call it, vapor to paper. Um, and actually, you know, as a founder, get that onto paper so it's not just living in my head. So I can start essentially preparing for my successor as I, you know, move throughout my career. The other part of this is that it's proof of the magic. It's proof that you're doing good work um, and that you are using business for good. It's one thing to know that you're having a positive impact on the lives of your clients, on the lives of, of in my case, uh, the young people who we are employing to do conservation work. It's another to actually have the data. And as a social scientist, I really appreciate data. Uh, the next is that it's a value add for your clients. Our customers are, are even more uh, choosy and, and uh, discerning about who they spend their money with. And there are a lot of consultants out there that do diversity work. And that in of itself is a really great thing, but it's, an, it's a whole nother ball game to be able to say, not only are we doing good work in the service industry, um, um, providing a service, a education service to a client, we're also reinvesting that money to help solve the problem we're trying to help you solve. Uh, so that, and then just the fact that it also helps keep us accountable um, to what we say our, our mission and values are. That is terrific, August. I know you and I have talked about this for years, right? About how, when you started your business, is it five, is Crim City five years old now? We are, we just, we actually became a B Corp on our fifth birthday. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I know that when you started, everyone said, oh, you need to be a nonprofit. And you're like, I don't want to be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And and I know way back in the beginning, you would tell people, well, I'm a multi-pronged social enterprise. And I, I think in just in the last five years, so much has changed, right? In the market space, when it comes to how we think about this and um, we're so happy to have you as a B Corp. So yay. <laughs> you know, and I, I will say this, friends, when I started my business, I, I was searching for a business coach and I either got the, yep, like you were saying, Lisa, you should just become a nonprofit or you should abandon this part of your business that doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be generating a bunch of profits. And so it was, it, it was a struggle to try to find a business coach uh, that understood the value of a social enterprise of using business for good rather than just as a form of extracting all of the profits. So really excited to be a part of this community. That's wonderful. We're excited to have you. So we've got some other additional good questions. Um, the first question we have is from Lori, and she is wondering if there are any tax or other benefits to your business for being a sort of, I'm going to say certified B Corp. Um, there is a difference, Lori, between a, being organized as a benefit corporation versus being a certified B Corp. So all of us on the call today, or all of us on the webinar today, we're certified B Corps. So that means we've been audited by B Lab as a third party for our systems and our operations, whereas being organized as a benefit corporation in Wisconsin, um, that's how that's you could be an LLC, an LLP, and that's corporate C Corp. So that's an organizational structure. Um, so when you talk about tax benefits, I will let you know that I believe Mary's business, and I know Evolution Marketing, and potentially August's business as well, we're all part of the we get we donate five percent of our um we donate five percent of our services every year as pro bono back to our clients and with that because we track measure and monitor that we are able to take that information so we get a letter so for example at evolution marketing I get a letter every year from the nonprofits we work with that say evolution marketing donates so many hours and there's a value associated with that i can take that letter and give it to my accountant and we can use that from a tax standpoint for our business 
Um, I don't, Mary, I don't know if you have any, I don't know if you do that. I don't know if you have any other insight about that. Sure. Um, Lori, it's great to see you on the call. So thanks for joining. I think perhaps a part of the question she might be asking is about a uh, general public buying into certified B Corps or benefit corporations as like stock options. And there has been some companies um, that are certified B Corps and, and um, also I'm imagining our um, legal benefit corporations that have actually given public offerings. Um, there are a handful of them um, which um, give the opportunity for general public individuals to invest in companies that have gone through the rigor of becoming either a certified B Corp or also have that benefit legal structure, the benefit um, corporation structure. And in, um, in Wisconsin in particular, um, there are, I don't know how many states there are now, they're probably closer to 40 now because when uh, Wisconsin's um, uh, legislation passed in 2017 and was enacted, actually, oh my goodness, Lisa, it's like almost like right to the day I know, that it was right? enacted like February 28, 2018 was when the benefit legislation um, uh, was enacted in Wisconsin that allowed S Corps and C Corps to bake into their um, corporate DNA with some legal protection to become a legal benefit corporation. That, that, that is not the certification, but it is the legal structure which protects management um, with that commitment to shareholder benefit. So um, that's a little bit of a rambling answer, but there are some companies that do that do have public offerings that individuals can invest in that are benefit corporations um, and certified B Corps. And I see Tom Eggert has a question. Um, so back to, I'm gonna ask this one to you, Lisa, since you haven't gotten to answer anything. What percent of customers mention your B Corp status as the reason that they're engaged with you? That's a that's a great question. And thank you, Tom, for that. Um, what's interesting, when we first became certified in 2018, maybe it was 30 to 40 percent. But I tell you what, in uh, 2022, it's every single client I've talked to. Um, last year, I'd say it's probably 80 percent of the people I talked with last year. And it's it's super interesting. I'm doing a lot of work with nonprofits, as I showed you before with that slide we had up. I mean, we've always done a lot of work with nonprofits, but it seems like in 2022 or 2021 and beyond, nonprofits also really want to work with certified B Corps who are also engaging in addressing climate change too. I think that's also another big part of this, not only that we're certified B Corp, but we're taking very practical and pragmatic actions to address climate change. That too is also very important. All right, so Alex has a question. Hello, Alex. Um, his question is, how has the before and after been becoming a B Corp? And so I know, August, we've had you speak, but you are our newest one on the call. So I'm going to throw that out to you, talking about um, before being a B Corp and now being a, you know, so a year ago till now. And then um, was it easier for you with your clients? Because again, you're also working in a really innovative space, right? The DEI space. Um, so talk about how being a B Corp has impacted you there. Well, for one, we actually have a set of policies that are like written down <laughs> rather than just in my head or just part of our culture. Um, because my right hand woman who manages our conservation side of and program side of the business has been with me since she was 16 years old, is now a full blown adult. But so we we had this understanding. Um, but now we have actual documentation to share with future employees, uh, to share with their partners. We share it as a model for our clients to aspire to as well. Um, our new clients, I would say, um, since we started sharing that we were pursuing uh, B Corp certification, have also mentioned that uh, partnering with us was, or hiring us rather, was a reason for um, for choosing our organization as their consultant rather than alternatives. I, so, August, not to interrupt, but I have to say I totally agree with you. I've received 
random phone calls this year. So for those of you who don't know, behind the Bee Lab, there's actually, it's called the Beehive. So it's a marketplace for professional service and um, for all different B Corp businesses where you can put your products out there. And I have Evolution Marketing listed. I've gotten random cold calls from businesses who want to become a B Corp or are a B Corp who need professional marketing services. And again, there's, there's definitely a motivation, right? For us to work together. We, we're Maybe we can talk a little bit about the B Corp. Um, what is it called? The our interdependency, our interdependence. Um, what is it called, Mary? What's it called? The statement of interdependency. Is that the name of it? Certificate of inter. Yes, certificate of interdependence. I think, or statement of interdependence. Yeah. Yes. So, obviously, you want to, you want to touch on that real quick, or you and I both can talk about it. Just how we are all working together, right? So, I know you and I are friends. You and I have worked together. We support each other, but. The B Corp family is like that. We want to work with other B Corps. So I do work with certified B Corps in Wisconsin to help them and with folks outside of Wisconsin, same thing for you, right? We're all working together to move this movement forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And I will say, uh, I think, you know, we have up to six clients every quarter. Um, two of our clients right now are certified B Corps themselves and found us, you know, through the community. So uh, and they're, they're a for-profit uh, B Corp. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, super exciting. <laughs> Yay. Um, do you want me to talk about go, um, the the level program or do we want to still take some um, more Q&A? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep doing Q&A. Um, we will, we will talk about the level program, which is super exciting. Um, Lori just came back with, um, she was asking, wonderful that there's so many of us that are women owned and women led. And I think since August, you've participated in previous International Women's Day. So as we all know, March is International Women's Day. And as those of us who are on this call today, we are all either women-owned businesses or women-led businesses. And how important is that in this day and age? Um, and I'm gonna just share a statistic with everyone right now. So last December, a report came out and if for Wisconsin, and it was really an interesting report. And I'm gonna actually share the link to the report right now in the chat. And the report talked about women in Wisconsin and what was going on in the workplace, workplace, because everyone is talking about the great resignation. Well, this report actually took it one step further and looked at women in Wisconsin and what women in Wisconsin are thinking, feeling, and seeing about their occupation. And what it found is that 88% of women want to work for a purpose-driven company. An additional piece of this is that 50% of the women who participate in it, so this is as of December of last year, were thinking about leaving their position in Wisconsin. So I think when you start to think about the role women are playing, what's happened with COVID and this great resignation, or one might say the great um, reflection on how we work, what is the role of work? What is the role that we play in each, you know, in our lives with work? All of these things are shifting and changing right now because the way we think about work has changed so tremendously due to COVID. And so I think what's interesting is that uh, at least everywhere I turn, people are talking about, and specifically women are talking about starting their own business, working for themselves, taking literally some power back or maybe empowering themselves to be, be able to control their own day, their schedule. And I think that this is something that we're starting to see around the world. I think the B Corp movement fits into that. I don't have any data. I don't know if any of our other speakers do about the number of B Corps that are women owned. Um, I know that the majority of B Corps are small, smaller, you know, small to mid-sized businesses. <laughs> yes, Lori, it is a it is a great silver line to the pandemic. I don't know, Mary, do you have any other do you have any specific data on number of women owned? I, I don't have a sense of that. You know, it's just um I think there was a, a piece of data that uh, with respect to women owned B Corps um that was shared with the We the Change group, but it, uh, it may not be up to date. So I wouldn't I don't would like to dig into that and get um get that specific piece of information before I make a guess about data that was maybe a couple of years ago. Um, but you know, to this point, um, Lisa, I do want to add one of the other benefits that I think probably all of our organizations have noticed um, by being certified is the workforce is looking to work for purposeful organizations. And, yes. you know, and so this incoming workforce um, is looking, you know, B, B Lab and the B Corp website, there is a particular job function called B Work, which is actually a job board. And you don't have to be a B Corp 
to post there. I don't think, but um, you might have people to are looking benefit. for D Corp. You might have to yeah. be a benefit so, corporation, but purpose driven, right? To be able right? to post there purpose driven. And so, you know, that's another because the challenge of, of hiring right now, as you know, as you were just mentioning with respect to the workforce, people are looking to work for companies that um, have purpose and are committed to August, you were awesome. Thank you 640 were women owned as of 2018. Thank you for that. Um, our researcher on the line here. Um, so that's another benefit. And I, and I have to tell you that I have found um, interns that way. They found me that way, um, as well as people, employees looking for positions with organizations. So another benefit there. No, I think, I think that's great, Mary. So it's bwork. I believe, org. And um, yeah, it's literally, the, it has grown tremendously. It used to be kind of like nested in the B-Lab website, and now it's its own external portal because there's so many folks who are looking to work for purpose-driven companies. So it's not only women. I think it's also Generation um, Zers and Millennials. All the data that I've seen there, literally, yeah, link to B-Work right there. They all talk about um, how they really want to work at a company that's doing good. And I think that's also why we saw, so I don't know, here's a fun fact. There were 6,000 businesses that applied in the last two years to be certified B Corps. And this is across the whole country, the, the world, not just the United States. Um, but there's only 4,500 of us, right? So, so in 2021, so 2020 and 2021, um, they had 6,000 businesses apply. I think that's a pretty amazing. So that shows us that clearly businesses want to become certified B Corps. That's also kind of why there's a little bit of a, it takes a little while to become a certified B Corp because there's a process. Um, but I think this movement and this growth is huge. When Mary certified in 2012, there were only a couple in Wisconsin. When Evolution Marketing certified in 2018, I was this, we were the seventh certified B Corp. So clearly we've seen a, a tremendous growth just in Wisconsin. We now have 17 certified B Corps here. Are there other questions um, that people from the audience may have about purpose and work and the B Corp movement? Okay, here's a great question. Is there any concern that larger corporations will try to use this process as a greenwash? This is this is great. Um, I'll start and then I'm going to hand this off to Mary as well because I think she and I have both been involved in this movement for a long time. And there are some very large um, Fortune 100 companies that are part of the B Corp movement. So for example, Unilever back in 20, I believe it was 20, 20, either 10 or 2011, their CEO, Paul Pullman at the time came in and he said, we want to take Unilever and we want to move uh, Unilever to being a mission-based purpose-driven company. Lisa's words, not Paul's words, okay? And with that, we want to create a more equitable and just system for our business. And so what he did is he, first of all, he, got a, he stopped doing quarterly shareholder meetings and instead they started, they said, we're gonna move away from that. So we're worrying about profits every quarter. We're gonna look at the big picture. And from there then um, Unilever now has, I believe it's eight certified B Corps within their portfolio of companies. The, I believe the first one that they purchased was Ben and Jerry's. And I think it was 2011 or 2012, don't quote me on the year. Um, but what's interesting is that Unilever then, because they've been uh, buying up companies that were certified B Corps, by bringing those certified B Corps into their, their parent company, right? They're then able to model the good behaviors. And as August had talked about before, structures of governance, they've been able to bring those in then to their other companies to share that information. So then, you know, fast forward, Paul Pullman worked with the UN, the Global Compact Group, to create the SDG, the Stable Development Goals that were released in 2015. And he and under his leadership, Unilever had really championed, I mean, I could talk about Unilever for hours, but they really championed some pretty amazing things, um, movements within their business space globally to help their business really to be put in these systems that are more equitable. So I know Mary, you popped on, so I'm sure you have some great insight about this as well. Yeah, thanks Lisa for that great story. And I think um, the, the rigor behind the certification process makes it really difficult for there to be uh, greenwashing because it's not just one area of your business. So, so companies can't really hide. They can't just say, well, we're gonna 
you know, get certified uh, with respect to environmental aspects of our business, um, but not look at the people side of our business or the clients that we work with or the su supply chain um, practices if we're in manufacturing. And so um, really this type of certification, I think is gained a lot of credibility globally um, because of the level of rigor with respect to the questions that have to be um, answered and the documentation that's necessary to actually meet the level of expectations. That's excellent, Mary. And for folks that don't know, we're going to move on to our resources section next. And then following the resources section, we're going to dig into learning more about what it takes to become a certified B Corp. And so if you have any questions about the certified B Corp process, please feel free to put them in the chat now. We're going to talk about resources. I don't remember who is our first resource. Is it you, Mary? It is. Hang on a second. Can you so, hear me still? Um, we, can, yeah, we totally can hear you. Okay, so, just a second. I got to get back to uh, my tech mode here, switching hats. That's okay. I'll talk come. about the resources high level. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, um, because B Lab, the movement has been growing tremendously over time. There have been many, um, I'm going to call initiatives that have sprung out of the B Corp movement. And so these we're now calling resources. And we're going to share with you some of the key ones that we think are great. They're free, they're open to the public, and they're things that you, as the audience who want to learn more, have access to. So we'll start with Mary and We the Change. All right, and I'm hoping that you guys are seeing this slide and not my email, is that right? Okay, great, that's what we're hoping for. So We in the Change, as I had mentioned earlier, just briefly, um, is a collective action group from B-Lab uh, that launched about um, three, four years ago in really to focus on those women B Corp leaders. Um, and you know, to that question of how many B Corps are actually led by women, and um, you know, increasing the the level of equality and equity in the business um, environment for um, for fifty percent of the population or in the workforce. So, um, it is a volunteer driven um, group right now. Um, we have been uh, doing various aspects and commitments to different types of strategy around elevating women in business. So the four areas of commitment you'll see here on the screen are with respect to, um, you know, there's a community there. So um, to the point that Lisa was talking about with, with respect to the, uh, to the beehive in the workplace of sharing resources, there's a lot of support in sharing resources. Hey, can someone recommend um, a particular um, accounting firm or bookkeeper? Um, you know, I'm looking for a bank that will support, you know, um, employee cooperative uh, organizations, et cetera. So there's communication through a Slack channel as well as a, a Google group. And you just, you know, need not even to be a certified B Corp to be a part of this. There is a pledge, which is on the website. There's over 900 people who have signed the pledge. So allies as well as um, women-led uh, companies have signed the pledge. One in particular uh, action, political action that um, the group rallied around was um, in the 2020 elections. There was a large uh, postcard campaign and we, the change group, actually sent out tens of thousands of postcards in support of the 2020 election. Um, there also is a commitment to the sustainable development goals, and I believe we so may be chatting about that a little bit further. So um, I am a member of the leadership circle on this, and I'm happy to answer any of the questions. We'd love to have more people joining us um, in this collective action group of BLAB and the B Corp movement. Thank you, Mary. Um, I'm going to turn it over to the Climate Collective, and I think, Lisa, you're going to talk about this. I am. So um, Melina will be here, everyone. She is just hung up at her doctor's appointment. So she will be coming a little bit later. So we'll get to hear all about Rebel Green um, in just a little while. Um, but Melina and I are both actually part of the, the, the B Corp Climate Collective. So there are several different climate collectives out there in the world. Um, we're part of specifically this one. And the graphic that you're looking at right now in front of you, this actually the, so it's the job of every business leader and policymaker to take climate action. It's our job at B-Lab to help. This graphic was literally created um, for the COP26 talks this last year. 
last year in 2021 um, in Glasgow. And what was interesting is literally B Labs UK and EU took over <laughs> literally all of the billboards and um, public signages on buses and on vehicles um, throughout the EU during the, the last COP26 summit with this messaging saying, it's your our job to act. It's our your job to manage. It's our your job to advocate. Trying to raise awareness about climate action and the fact that this is something that impacts everybody. Um, real quick, high level, the B Corp Climate Collective was started in 20, 2018 or 2019. I can't remember. I've been involved with it for a long time. I just don't remember what year it started. And it came out, um, the, one of the first big missions of the Climate Collective was literally to say at COP25, it was to get as many certified B Corps to sign on to say that we will be net zero by 2030. Um, and so Evolution Marketing was the first business in Wisconsin to do that. And we were one of, I believe there were 525 of us in December of 2019, 2019, yeah, December 2019 at COP25, who publicly um, made the statement that we will be net zero by 2030. Now you say, that's wonderful, Lisa, but lots of people are making net zero um, statements. What's different about this is the fact that as certified B Corps, we get re-evaluated re every couple of years. So every couple of years, as Mary said, she's on her fifth recertification. Evolution Marketing is finishing our second recertification right now. Every three years, you have to recertify as a B Corp, as a certified B Corp. So what that means is that you have to continue to um, add, you know, how do I say this right way? Continue to improve your business. So it's all about continuous improvement. And each, every cycle, B Labs does a new set of questions. So right now we're in version 6.0 of the BIA, which is the B Impact Assessment. When Evolution Marketing certified, we certified under the version five. Now we're on to version six. And so as we, we certify every three years, we're on the next version of the B Impact Assessment. And that B Impact Assessment is growing and evolving as the world is growing and evolving. So for a business to come out and say that, yes, we're gonna be part of this net zero by 2030, this actually is a true legitimate commitment because B Labs is going to hold all of us who are certified B Corps feet to the fire to make sure that that actually happened. And so that's a little bit different than companies. And I'm, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that many companies will make statements saying we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that, but they're not having a third party holding their feet to the fire where the B Corp movement is holding our feet to the fire. Today, there are over 1,700 businesses, certified B Corps. So of our 4,400, 1,700 of those have signed on to be net zero by 2030, which I think is really great. There's a wonderful website. It's bcorpclimatecollective.org. There are playbooks, there's toolkits, there's amazing resources. So if your business does not know where to begin in addressing climate, check it out. It is filled full of them. Okay. I, the next one, I think might be me now, Be The Change. So for those of you who are not familiar with Be The Change, it is, it's bethechange.com. And it's literally, it's a media group for B Corps. Yes, I'm a marketing communications person. So I love Be The Change. So what's super cool about it is there's two ways that it could help you. One, it can provide you education about what's happening in the B Corp movement. And it's actually, it's, it's, it's a page, it's hosted through medium.com and it's the Be The Change section on Medium. And um, what B Labs does, and B Labs works with Bark Media, and Bark Media puts together and they manage this for them, they put together articles. So if you look at this image um, on the screen, the image to the, to the right says 17 B Corp vendors and suppliers that can help amplify your company's positive impact. So what Bark Media does is they work in concert with B Labs US and Canada, as we're talking about the US and Canada right now, not globally. And they highlight and showcase different businesses within the B Corp movement who are working to help other B Corps be successful. So in this case, it's um, these B2B B Corps offer services and products with a purpose beyond profit, okay? And then, so that's, so they do these stories monthly. So if you are looking for holiday gifts, like they do amazing holiday gift guides. I know Rebel Green has had their products in the holiday gift guides. And there's all different types of guides like this that are put out through, um, be the change. The second way, if you look to the left, is an article is where your business, uh, if you're a certified B Corp, you can write articles and you can share, use 
the Be the Change site as a place to share articles that you are passionate about. So my intern and I last year wrote an article, How Forward Thinking Businesses Can Address Systemic Inequalities Through Adoption of the SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. So our article is posted on Be the Change. Um, and it's great. So it, we've had several articles from other Wisconsin-based B Corps posted on Be the Change over time. I know Tribe Nine has had articles, Artisan Dental has had articles. I think um, Riverwater Partners, I think there's been an article about you up there. Anyway, um, if there's any B Corps who are listening and you'd like to write an article, um, I can connect you with the folks at Bark Media or there's um, on, the, on the Be the Change landing page, they have a link that you can fill out so you can submit an article. So it's a great way for those of us in the community to share what we're doing. I know that Cream City was, um, so August Business Cream City was featured in an article last year about our next talking point, which is the level program. Next slide and I'm gonna turn it over to August now. Thank you, Vince, sorry for the delay. Two years of this and you'd think I'd know where the mute button was. <laughs> okay, so friends, I am super proud of the fact that Cream City Conservation is Wisconsin's first black owned certified B Corp. It's awesome, super honored. However, it's 2022 friends. And I also think it's simultaneously unacceptable that we only have one black owned certified B Corp in the state of Wisconsin. I became a certified B Corp, or my company rather became a certified B Corp because of the B level program that Lisa Giesenbauer so graciously connected me with. Um, and this is a program that is specifically designed to support organizations uh, that are led by Black, Indigenous, and people of color, specifically led by women of that identity. Uh, so businesses that tend to face um, higher barriers, uh, more significant limitations. Um, just as a quick side note, um, white led businesses are 30 times more likely to receive uh, funding <laughs> um, than black owned or um, indigenous and people of color owned businesses. So the B-level program is a process where up to 10 different organizations that are BIPOC and women led uh, receive support and connection to another entity uh, that helps them through the certification process. So what this means is that this is intended, this is uh, B-Lab's intention to help cultivate more businesses um, so that uh, of color who wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity or the resources to be able to navigate through the certification process on their own. So if we have any folks on the call today who are, are BIPOC and women-led, please do consider applying for the, the B-Lab program, uh, I'm sorry, the, the level program. I had an amazing experience. We, we went through our most challenging year of business in 2021 uh, ever, hopefully ever. <laughs> Again, and uh, the the B the, the B Corp certification process really helped us in putting some 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 structure around what we were trying to do. I am not I am not an uh, an entrepreneur by 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 spirit. This is totally something as I mentioned I've accidentally fallen into, but I've also accidentally fallen in love with it. Uh, so the deadline to apply uh, is March 11th. Please do make sure that um, if you or if anyone you know uh, could be a great fit for the program, please do consider it. Um, and also just another plug for uh, for Evolution Marketing. They are also one of our local Wisconsin um, uh, companies that helped uh, folks go through the B, the B Corp certification process. Anything I missed, Lisa and Mary? <laughs> Oh, that's great, August, and thank you so much. Um, I, I think the big point, and and this is just a follow up with what August is talking about, is that in I believe it was 2020, B Labs um, internally as an organization said, you know, we know that we don't have a lot of BIPOC owned and women owned businesses, and we really want to put our money where our mouth is, right? If these are our values, we want to invest. And the level program, which Lacus Business was literally one of the first to beta test the program. I mean, this program only started last year. Um, and I, so I think that's really important to note that B-Lab in the U.S. and Canada is trying very hard to put programs and structures in place so that we can help bring individuals and businesses who may not have opportunity or be able to afford, right? A consultant to help them go through the process, to go through this process and become a certified B Corp. Um, I don't know, August, do you have anything more to add about that? I just, to me, it shows a mark of leadership in my opinion, you know, that, that this organization is really 
putting programming in place to help address problems that they see. Because really, I mean, the UN says it, the biggest issue we see is systemic inequalities that exist, right? And as you had said, with the data on access just to funding alone, and then throw throw women of color on top of that, it's even cha more challenging, right, for funding and for access to other opportunities. Absolutely, I, I will just add that um, going through the, the level program helped take a process that I would have considered very cumbersome, very stressful um, if I were to have done it on my own, um, quite supportive. I, my entire team felt supportive through the process. Um, our consultant was extremely flexible in helping us shift around priorities uh, so that we can get our, our deadlines met. Um, and again, I, I can't speak highly enough about the experience and, and what it has meant for my company just to be able to establish some of those structures that will help us in being more effective for years to come. So I, I, I strongly, strongly recommend, um, again, if, if you personally do, um, don't qualify for this, please do share it widely with anyone. You never know who's thinking about building a business. Um, and, and this could be the, the impetus for that. So thanks. Thank you, August. Yes, and we really would like to grow um, our number of minority-owned businesses in Wisconsin. So we have in our Be, Be Local newsletter, we're sharing information about this. We've shared it on social media. Please share with anybody you know, um, because we believe it's really important to have a robust Be Local Wisconsin that actually represents businesses from that represent all the people of Wisconsin. So now we are gonna move into certification questions. So if you have a specific certification question, please put it into the box. I know there's one right now. Um, Lori wrote, is there a minimum level of income capitalization required to become certified? Are there educational shits, i.e. MBA preparation? Um, okay, first of all, there is not a minimum level of income capitalization. You can be a small business um, to become, as a small business, you can apply to become a certified B Corp. What you do need though, to make it so that it's, <laughs> there's two ways of doing it. You can start off, if you if you are starting a brand new business, there's this thing called a pending B Corp certification. You can apply for that, in your, but you have to be in the first year of your business. So for example, if you started a business in 2022 and you filed your articles of incorporation in 2022, that would be awesome. You could come in as a pending B Corp and then you have within one year of being a pending B Corp, you have to then complete the B Impact Assessment for that next year of your business. Okay. Um, a lot of businesses though, when they start, don't, aren't ready maybe to push our putting structures in place at the very beginning. So if you're already a business that's been in existence, you really need to have two years worth of, I'm going to say records. Um, you don't per se have to have income because again, not all, not all businesses, depending on their structure, show income in their first couple of years, but you have to have two years of records. You have to have records for, for how you organized your structure, the activities and actions you're taking and doing, because you need to look at the, the last two years of your business when you go through the certification process. Um, Mary, do you want to talk anything at all about this? Did I miss anything? And or Sarah, I know you guys um, recertified in 2020, and um, maybe you could talk after Mary's done sharing some of your experiences with your most recent recertification. Well, I'm still in my recertification process. Thanks, Lisa. And um, I think the what's happened over the last 10 years, uh, you know, my as I mentioned, um, this is Global's first certification was in 2012, is that um, B Lab and Lisa, you of course can speak to this um, also as one of the um, certifying consultants in the group that, you know, the group that supports or, um, companies with their certification process is that there's a new, a new level of rigor to really identify the impact your business is having. And they call them business, what do they call them? Impact business models. Impact IBM business models, yep. So um, that really having to demonstrate um, outcomes, you know, if you say, for example, my, my company does a lot of work with nonprofits and those beneficiaries, well, how do, we, how do you measure the impact that you're actually having on those beneficiaries? Not that you're just delivering services. So there's a level of rigor um, as companies that we need to be able to demonstrate. It's not just that we deliver services to um, organizations that are um, mission-driven, but actually what type of change is happening with those beneficiaries. 
Yeah, Mary, is that's that's exactly right. And um, we can we'll talk. Let's let Sarah tell us about her experiences, and let's come back to that because I think that talking about the impact business model is important okay. because I think that's a point where people get confused. So, Sarah, do you, can you talk a little bit about um, the impact business model that Invest fits under, and tell us kind of some of the things that came up during your last recertification? Yeah, I guess um, so. Yeah, we officially um, certified our current certification in March 2020. So we were working on that quite a bit in 2019. And I guess I wasn't here when we did our original certification, but I know from from stories from John that, um, you know, I guess it, the certifications changed a lot and kind of um, how, um, you know, we're a very small business. And I think at first it was a lot of things were not as applicable, um, but I think, um, it's been um, developed, I guess, the certification to really apply to a lot more businesses and kind of so we're that, that we're able to answer a lot of these questions. Um, I think it's kind of, yeah, a unique model because I know we talked a lot about like our different stakeholders in the, the assessment. And so we have, you know, it's both employees, our investors, but also our international microfinance partners. So I think, you know, I'm trying to remember um, specific questions, but I think, um, just answering a lot of questions, I guess, how how our business and how our operations affect all of those stakeholders. I think, yeah, each business, I guess, has a pretty different experience of that, but um, I think that was something, I guess, unique to to us as we were both US-based, but, you know, working um, very internationally. Um, I'm curious to see how we'll, we'll get recertified next spring, so um, getting prepared for that pretty soon. Um, well, and yeah. John just wrote Sarah in the notes that the process is far more friendly to small businesses today <laughs> than it was in 2010 and 2011. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I have to agree. And I think too, the fact that Envest, so much of the work you're doing is is not here, right? So you're you're operating in a global global manner, right? Um, and and I'm sure, I don't know, do you know what the percentage is? It is? It's, it's probably 80 or 90%, and maybe you said this before and I missed it when my computer died, but so much of your money, right? You bring the money in here, but it's invested globally. Right, yeah, all of our lending is done um, outside of the US internationally. So um, yeah, quite a few you know, different kind of countries to work with, but um, yeah. And how do you, um, so I know going back to the impact business model, one of the questions is how does a business showcase the impacts of their work in a developing country. So my question to you is, Sarah, what, what ways does Envest um, track and measure and monitor the money you give and then the outcomes from that money? So I know as you're doing micro lending, right? So do you yeah. measure like the number of businesses that were created or the number of kids that were able to go to school um, in a community? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, I can um, touch on um, some of that and what we do. Um, so yeah, like I said in my um, um, kind of part of the presentation, we're lending often to um, to the institution itself, um, finding really strong and um, socially focused enterprises to lend to. Um, we do love, you know, we get a lot of pictures of end borrowers and um, a lot of, I guess, stories, which um, I think are great to hear. I know um, a couple of my colleagues have done um, visits to um, these institutions, again, to meet and to learn about those things. Um, but I guess a lot of the stories about end borrowers aren't necessarily um, tracked. It's really tracking on the um, institution themselves. Um, so looking at their financial success, but also, you know, are they truly um, fulfilling the social mission? And, you know, how many women are they lending to um, kind of those rural versus non-rural um, but then kind of letting them manage those um, um, details of the end borrowers. But um, it's something we love to, to hear and I think we'll, we'll continue to, to learn about as we do visits and um, yeah. No, that's great. Cause I, I think, one of the, no, that's good. Mm -hmm. Cause I think one of the biggest things when you're completing the B impact assessment is trying to figure out which impact model you fit under. And yeah. there are over a hundred different ones, right? So right. <laughs> being able to quantify and then tell those stories. So, so as B lab said it, I'm so evolution marketing is considered a B Corp consultant. And so we're part of a, a group of consultants that work with B Corps. And we were told this is, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago at a consultant call that, um, 
you know, the reality is it's nice that there's impacts, but you have to measure the outcomes of the impacts from your business. And so I think that's something that all of us as B Corp struggle with. And that I think gets to the back to the purpose again, right? Um, is how do we not only tell the qualitative story, but how do we quantify some of that data, right? And I think that's what you're saying, Sarah, with um, the institutions that Invest is partnering with, is those institutions are able to say, we were able to help you know, 50 women or 500 women, and they were able to help their families raise out of poverty, right? Or I don't want to make something up, but yeah. like, um, like clear data like that, because I think that's really important, right? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you know, figuring out where we work and I guess, you know, we do, you know, get some of those numbers. So kind of, yeah, I guess doing some work on our end to really, to really see where that's going, because it's not always... Um, yeah, directly, you know, what we're involved in, but, um, yeah, that'll be interesting to, yeah, again, see how that, that looks in the future. Well, and as, yeah. and as you're evolving, right, you're, so you're, right. as you go as through the grow. process, you're, you're learning more through the process and you're establishing these relationships so that it's easier for Envest in the future to do some of the tracking, right? Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing yeah. that example. That that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. And I and I would say Envest is one of is is probably one of the more complicated um, impact investing or impact um, models, right? Whereas it might be easier for Evolution Marketing or for um, Vista Global or Cream City to sh you know showcase where we say this is how many you know we have fifty percent of our clients are nonprofits, and of those fifty percent, we don't need a time back. That's a lot easier. Okay, John's got some information here. Invest value add is access to credit. About 9,000 people have access to credit due to invest activities. That is awesome. See, and this is the, this is the type of data that the yeah. big impact assessment helps us to bring out. And then John and his team can now use this data to share their story too. And I think that really gets to what are the impacts of the work that we're doing, right? And that's why we're certified B Corps. That's awesome. Good, good job, invest team. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, John. Good stat, John. <laughs> So we're going to ask if, if there are any other questions about certifying. Otherwise, we have um, some slides that we can talk through with you all. But I want to make sure that if anybody who's listening has specific questions um, about the B Corp certification process. Okay, Lori just wrote, have you business owners learned things about your work and its impacts that surprised you? <laughs> I'm going to turn this over to August because she and I were talking about this not too long ago. Uh, the silver lining, August, from... Um, 2020 and 2021. Talk about that. <laughs> oh God. I mean, there's so much I, that we've talked about. I don't know exactly, but um tied to the B Corp, tied to becoming a B Corp. Um, um I guess, well, I don't know if this is what you mean, um, Lisa, but I, I so I went through this process with my my right hand woman who is in charge of our um our core program. And so we went, it was very transparent to go over like how much is everybody making in the organization? And we found that there was only a two to $10 max difference between our lowest paid employee and myself. And like, I believe that if you don't, if you can't afford to pay people a living wage, you don't have a viable business. And so um, I, I felt like that is definitely something that helped um, solidify the the trust and relationship I have with with my team also. Um, I don't know. You want to give me a, a little bit? No, more that's answer? that is that's awesome. I think it was the transparency. I, I think I think the quote you had said to me was something along the lines of you were surprised at how equitable your business was. You know, because oh, we yeah. talk about it all the time, right? But but it, once <laughs> you have to start to measure it, right? And you measured it, and you're like, wow, we're, I'm actually doing the things I said I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, the you know being able to really like have the data that to to you know to the, the proof of the magic, if you will, um, has been really great. Um, and then it also allows us to, if we know if we know what we're tracking, then we can improve it. If we if it needs to be improved, we can look at what where are we being successful, and um, can we take some of those successes, those tactics, and apply them in other areas of the business too. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's just, that's excellent. And I, and I think that gets to a question we have right now in terms of meeting the goals you thought you had or the effects that your services had on recipients, you know, what did you learn through the process? Did you, did you come out saying what I, I, okay, I love what you do. So I think, I think you've been very successful in offering your services, but 
I'm going to let you tell me <laughs> if, if the proof was there in the pudding as far as the programs and the youth that you're helping, um, were you able to, to have better data now to showcase what they're doing and the impact you've had on their lives? Yeah, so that that's something that I would say we're probably already doing through our um, our culture assessment with the students um, and our core members, but being able to share that with B Corp um, in terms of looking at you know who do, who's coming back to organizations year after year, who's securing full time employment, um, who's staying within the environmental industry, who's who's not but still having that be a part of their you know personal lives has been really impactful. Um, but also looking at our clients to see how they are have been growing and and shifting right. their impact years year after year too, um, you know. So we're we're in this phase now where we do culture assessments and racial equity audits with our clients. Um, so we've got a a good cohort of folks who are now um, on their second or third time of reassessing themselves and being able to to see the the shift in culture to see the increase in representation of, of their, their staff and their partnerships and the, if they're a youth serving organization, the youth in their program. So yeah, all of that has been extremely valuable. And it's, I mean, it's amazing. I can't wait to till you have something public that you can share like an impact report because that's the type of stuff that leads to love. Cause I just, I think it's, I don't think people will realize that this type of work can happen and that it's successful, right? Because so much of this is kind of, um, it's new, it's emerging, right? So we're in this emerging space. Absolutely, absolutely. So congratulations, August. Thank you Thank for sharing. You. Mary, do you have um, anything that you would wanna add about things that you've learned through your um, B Impact Assessment about the goals that you had and? Sure, thanks, thanks Lisa. Appreciate that, bringing that up. And there's a few other chats uh, comments in the chat that we can pick up on as well. Um, I think one of the things that going through the um, assessment does is it makes you as a, as a business owner um, actually think about questions that you hadn't thought about previously. Like, oh, wow, I could approach my practices, the practices that I have or how I engage um, my the clients or how I engage in the community in ways that I hadn't thought of. So, you know, one example is carbon, um, you know, carbon use and uh, really measuring what your your carbon impact is. And wow, that there's actually, you know, there's calculators and you can really think about the choices that you make in, in the environment, in your environmental practices, which is different than necessarily outcomes with your clients. But it is in, I think the certification process really helps us as business owners think more holistically about how we are engaging in the world. Um, you know, are we being radically inclusive and richly re regenerative in our practices holistically? So that I think is really a powerful um, benefit of going through the impact assessment process because it makes you stop and pause and think about where are there areas in your business practices that you could consider doing differently that you hadn't even had visibility to thinking about. Well, and Mary, I want you to also talk about, um, because you are our longest running B Corp, and this is your fifth research. I mean, for me, just going from <laughs> BIA 5.0 to BIA 6.0, I, that's a change. Now I can't imagine you probably went from like two to six, you know, so as, as, the, as the B impact assessment has grown and evolved and like we talked about the net zero by 2030 has been added. Um, there's all these other characteristics or facets that mainstream business is now being asked to deal with today. And that's all being worked into the B impact assessment. So talk about how that has helped you to stay ahead of the curve, right? As, as a leader in the space that you're in, because I'm, I'm, I'm making the assumption that because you keep recertifying that, that, that is helping pushing you to continue to be better and to grow and evolve as a business. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. Every time I sort of brace myself for, Okay, how do I have to up my up our game now? Because with every version of the B Impact Assessment, um, there is a, an increased level of rigor. You know, there weren't BIAs three versions ago. Like that was not something that was in the formula, and um, and so um, 
I mean, uh, BI, business impact um, models, BI, I'm sorry, um, impact business models. There's so many acronyms. Get, it, get, the, get them aligned right. So those impact business models didn't exist several versions ago. And so you really didn't think about how you were doing your business in such a way. Was it something related to education or um, um, social enterprise serving businesses? I mean, as you mentioned, Lisa, there's over 100 different models. Um, and it, for me, you know, doing consulting work um, with nonprofits and socially minded businesses, it's a crowded space. There's lots of folks out there who are consultants um, in organizational change and transformation. And I think the commitment to um, measure, how do you, you know, measuring the impact that you're actually having with clients and walking alongside clients um, as a certified B Corp sets your business apart from others. You know, initially, um, I didn't feel like my the certification actually did much for um, setting myself apart because as a nonprofit organization, or primarily the the clients that I had, they they would they knew you would be mission aligned if they were going to hire you because they sensed that in the interviewing process, and I think that was a lot of what was important to them. But now, what we're really seeing is a level of sophistication in the consumer, if we will talk about it you know, businesses and companies and nonprofits who are consuming your services are really more um, intentional about the kinds of companies they want to partner with, including consultants. And so it does help um, me and my company really um, increase the intentionality around um, measuring the, the type of impact that, I, that we have with the clients that we support. That's great, Mary. Thank you for sharing that. And again, I think staying ahead of the curve, right? Because this movement really is, so let's say 14 or 15 years old. I mean, really, it's probably only 10 years old, legitimately, you know, because it took several years to get off the ground. I mean, just like sustainability. I mean, the first jobs of sustainability were in 2005. So there's, there's so much that's happened and shifted and changed just in the last just 10 years, right, of us being in business. And it's pretty amazing to see how these shifts and changes are helping, I think, us. So I'm going to speak for Evolution Marketing. And I think, Mary, you same for Glo Vista Global. Um, and I'm guessing, too, for August, for um, Cream City, you know, because we're continuously improving our business and we're consultants helping other businesses or helping other nonprofits, we're helping them to continuously improve and we're helping them to think about these key topics that are front and center that are gaining are gaining understanding in the mainstream, right? So it's it's kind of like, like you said, it's, it, yes, you, you gotta, you know, put your seatbelt on to get ready to go through, create the, do the BIA, but as you go through the process, it opens your mind to thinking about things differently and thinking about something you may not have done before and, you know, something you can bring into the system. Exactly. And I think August just uh, shared that in the chat, you know, she, that she, you know, through the impact assessment process um, in the BIA, that she has a virtual office stewardship policy that she's now sharing with, you know, her clients. Um, so that ripple effect that happens. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Oh, and guess this, Melina is joining us now. All right. So, so hello, Melina Marcus. We're going to, Mary's going to pull up your slides. Um, yes, so I just, am. just give us a hot minute. And then Melina, if you want to um, unmute yourself and come on off the screen, there you are. Uh, nice. Melina is our fifth speaker today, and we're so happy to have her with us. Mary's going to, is that the first one? We're going to turn it over to Melina. One second, I'm having some technical difficulties here. You're on. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well today. I um, wanted to talk to you about Rebel Green um, as a certified B Corp. Um, we are a Wisconsin based small business um, certified B Corporation. We're women owned and a lifestyle brand of plant powered cleaners. We created the brand in 2008 to change everybody's home care habits for good. Wanted safer alternatives for families, including our own who have skin sensitivities to ingredients commonly found in conventional and some natural products. And we were not finding much on the market to meet our needs. 
Um, and now I know one of the questions is, how difficult was it for us to become a B Corp? Um, we founded our small business with the purpose of de developing products that were environmentally safe, safer for families, and safer for the planet. Um, we were already building business as a force for good into our business DNA, um, and it took us about two years to achieve B Corp certification. Our core values, clean air, clean food, clean water, our human right, are communicated through the certifications we choose and our social media. Our product lineup includes everything from tree-free um, bamboo toilet paper to sulfate-free dish soap, plant-powered all-purpose cleaner, and USDA-certified organic laundry products and foaming hand soap. We achieved our B Corp certification in 2019 when we made the strategic decision to operate the firm in a triple bottom line manner. We believe we can leverage our visibility through our products and by communicating our advocacy through our media outreach. As a small women-owned business, we know we can be leaders in the field of economic and business development, as well as environmental and social policy. By supporting B Corps, people are supporting businesses that are reducing inequality, lowering levels of poverty, designing products for a healthier environment, and creating high quality jobs with dignity and purpose. Um, recent data from SPINS shows that even during the pandemic, products labeled B Corp were up 11%, and this is from August 2020. Um, I know you want to know what action our business is doing to address climate change in Wisconsin. We continue to educate our cut consumers on the root causes of climate change by the ingredients and certifications we choose through our social media channels and partnerships with organizations who share our same values and core climate advocacy. Additionally, we are committed to working with as many local manufacturers as possible and only those who share our same eco-friendly production methods. To reduce the environmental impact caused by transportation, our manufacturers use local suppliers whenever possible. Um, and then what initiative is our business doing now to address social responsibility? Um, we offer better for you products with cleaner ingredients. We always follow the strictest European ingredient standards and list every ingredient on our label, um, unlike many other companies. We work with retailers like Outpost Food Co-op and Thrive Market as well, who also have tough ingredient standards. We evaluate every ingredient for its environmental impact, safety, efficacy, source labeling, animal testing as well. Um, we only work with partners who share our same values and we disclose <laughs> ingredients on our labels. Um, it can make it hard to compete with brands head to head who don't. We achieve Safer Choice certification for our fruit and veggie clean. Um, Safer Choice is part of the EPA pollution prevention program and helps purchasers find products that perform and contain ingredients that are safer for human health and the environment. Our products have a shorter, cleaner slate of ingredient lists, um, and we're free from harsh chemicals found in many conventional um, products. Um, free from um, chemicals like sulfates, synthetic fragrances, dyes, optical brighteners, phosphates, parabens, ammonia, just for starters, and only essential oils are used. We pride ourselves on making cruelty from tree products as certified by the Leaping, Leaping Bunny Association program. Um, Leaping Bunny is the only internationally recognized symbol of guaranteeing consumers that no new animal tests were used in the development of any products displaying it. Consumers share this value as sales of product labeled, products labeled cruelty-free are up 19%, according to SPIN's data from last year, that was or two years ago, August 20th. Um, every purchase of Rebel Green products goes towards trees for the future, whose mission is to end poverty by training farmers to regenerate their land. Um, our laundry detergent line is USDA certified organic, and we recently came out with a line of certified organic foaming hand soaps. We know organics are on the rise as well. Um, sales are, um, of products labeled organic were up 11% according to SPINS in the second half of 2020. And then to offset the carbon generated from the tree free line, we partnered with the Paradigm Project, a social enterprise focused on combating poverty in East Africa to fund the clean cook stoves for women um, and families in rural Kenya. The Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves states the basic act of cooking kills more than 4 million people a year and more than half the world still cooks on an open flame. We work with Gold Standard, a nonprofit governing body that certifies only the highest quality carbon offset projects that are committed to partnerships with local communities. As a certified women-owned business, we proudly display the logo of our products to create a movement of support for women-owned businesses. The Women's Business Enterprise National Council, um, we bank, is a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to helping women-owned businesses thrive and crafting an environment of opportunity for women-owned. Um, the WeBank logo on marketing materials and websites shows support for women entrepreneurs. You also might recognize the women-owned logo. Um, it brings consumer recognition to women-owned businesses by raising awareness for why, where, and how to buy women-owned. Um, and then um, I know a question was, um, what has been the collateral beauty during the pandemic? Um, thank you, August, for that one. 
Um, coming together as a community, um, we pivoted production and offered discounts to meet the needs of our community, grappling with the spread of COVID, including production on new essential items like reusable face masks, new environmentally, who approved formulas as, of safe hand sanitizers. We increased production of our carbon neutral tree free um, line from bamboo. Um, we came up with more plant powered household cleaners and sulfate free synthetic fragrance free hand soaps. Um, we offer donations for, of our face masks um, to uh, you know, our frontline workers at, at uh, grocery stores. And we also pivoted to increase pro products suddenly in demand, such as our new um, smaller fruit and veggie clean, which helped fill voids on the shelves of our local retailers like Outpost and Sedex and Whole Foods Market stores in um, Wisconsin and throughout the country. Um, we, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, it was important for us to invite consumers to repair the world by taking an essential product like toilet paper, making it just as soft as conventional to help educate the consumer on what a big impact we could all make simply by switching our role. Um, we believe um, we made an impact for the better on getting this message out and driving many more people to try a relatively new sustainable product during a time of increased demand for essentials. In the early stages of the pandemic, with calls coming in from all over the country, we dropped off everything we had um, in Milwaukee, hand sanitizers, toilet paper, hand soaps to our local retail partners like Outpost, Outpost Food Co-op, Metcalfs, and Sednix um, Food Markets. Um, and we add keeper policies that will bring about a regenerative and equitable society, um, which we can talk about when we go into the B Corp Climate Collective. Um, so Lisa, I will turn that over back over to you. Okay, well, wait, don't go anywhere, Melina. Oh. Sure. One of our attendees is in Illinois, and they would like to know where they can buy your products. Oh, in sure. Illinois. Um, let's see. We have been selling at Sunset um, Food Market. Um, I'm trying to think where else in Illinois now. Some select. Um, let's see. What are the uh, the metro markets there? Can't think of the name right now. Pick, pick and save. It's the uh, Roundies. Um, Oh, I can get back to you on that one and give you the list. Are you are you at um, Costco in Illinois or Whole Foods in Illinois? We are in Costco in the Bay Area. We just launched. So hopefully go into your Costco locally and request Rebel Green. Um, our laundry detergent is in the Costco in the Bay Area. Um, Whole Foods, we have been in there for various products. You might still have some fruit and veggie clean left in Whole Foods, um, but I'm not sure. I've not checked our Illinois uh, assortment lately in Whole Foods to see if we're still there, but I will get what back to you. You can just email us um, and let me know. What about Target? August says she feels like she's seen Rebel Green and Target in Illinois. Oh, okay. Thank you, August. Um, we are offered online, target.com. Um, and in a, a few years ago, we our fruit and veggie clean was in Target um, in the produce department, and hopefully we'll be back in there again. That's excellent. Thanks, Melina. We did talk about the Climate Collective um, okay. before when you when you were not here, but if you'd like to add anything about um, some of the work that um, Rebel Green has done as far as tying in with the Climate Collective and um, the outreach engagement slash tied to public policy, that would be great. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Melina? Oh, sure. Um, just recently, we used our voice as a business, um, along with other businesses, to leverage the power of the natural product industry for climate action, um, we joined the hashtag call for climate now um, 2021 campaign, which was to encourage the American public um, to, to call their senators and congressmen and urge them to address the threat of our changing climate. We participated by crafting messaging and posted on our social channels. Um, a great quote that I heard recently um, is, and I have it up on my wall, is good corporate climate leadership requires good corporate climate policy leadership. So I think that's something important for all business leaders to take into consideration. Um, and then I just wanna say the um, Climate Collective through B Corp, um, as Lisa, Lisa, you probably shared, is just a wonderful resource for free articles, um, commitments and questions um, that people may have um, on this arduous journey. So to help with climate action. Um, some of the other um, things we participated in um, was a coalition. I don't know, Lisa, if you talked about this one between Cirrus, um, the Climate Collaborative, which is No, our but why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because one of the things that people can participate in later is workshops that they're going to be doing later this month. Remember, we talked about this oh, yesterday. Yes. So why don't you talk about, talk about the partnership? And then Mary, if you want to bring up um, our slides and work towards the information slide. 
the event listing slide, that'd be great. Okay, Melina, talk about serious partnerships with Oh, Bila. sure. So through the Climate Collective, it's really exciting that coalitions are forming. Um, there was one formed um, in 2020, and this was between Cirrus and Climate Collaborative and the B Corp Climate Collective. And this was the lead on Climate 2020. Um, this was during the height of the pandemic, and it was the largest virtual business call to action to address climate change. Um, and the lead on Climate 2020 brought together businesses large and small from sectors across the US economy to call on Congress to pass a resilient st stimulus plan and to build back better, which we all know about, uh, while working towards long-term climate solutions, including a price on carbon. Um, we were one of 280 companies, both large and small, that signed up to call on Congress to pass the stimulus plan and build back better while working toward long-term climate solutions. Um, what was great about this, there's so many great things about it, but we participated in advocacy training, best practices on how to advocate effectively with different audiences. Um, and we really were talking about how the plight of the small minority owned and women owned business um, you know, really need support and how we can support these businesses by building a sustainable and equitable economy as we build back better. Um, and so we were all proud to have our voices heard at um, the Young Climate 2020. So that's just one of the initiatives. And then Lisa, you said that there's going to be um, workshops. Yes. So based on what happened um, in 2020 that Melina and I were both actually part of, um, B Lab is partnering with Cirrus to offer some upcoming workshops, which, are, which is super exciting. So what you have in front of you right now is a list of things that are coming and it's part of the reset. So R-E-S-E-T leadership series that B Labs is putting together. So the first one is aligning the rules, becoming an advocate for policy change. And that workshop, it's two hours on March 3rd, and it's literally, it's in partnership, and it's B Labs and Cirrus together are helping members of the B Corp community. And if you're not a certified B Corp, that's okay. They want you to attend as well. This is open to everyone, and it's free to attend. Um, the workshop will help you to be a better climate advocate and to do more, bring public policy work into the work that your business is doing. And then they are doing on um, March 31st, again, as part of the, the Reset Leadership Program, they will be doing an Achieving Racial Equity Workshop. Again, this is tying, tying in with August's work. And again, it's to help B Corps and non B Corps, again, free, open to the public, to really help bring into um, our own organizational structure racial equity and to address. Um, our own system. So what's really nice about where B Labs is at and what this movement has been growing so much is that there, there really now are a lot of external resources for folks who are interested in this movement or interested in this community to take advantage of. So those are two of the programs that are coming up. There will also be a program on um, March 15th. It's called Behind the Bee. So uh, for those of you who don't know, March is the National Certified Bee Corp Month um, in U.S. and Canada. And so this Behind the Bee program will talk about and unpack what it takes to be a certified Bee Corp. So if you're interested in learning more about the certification process and digging into it, please attend that. It's free and open to the public. Um, we're also going to be having a, it's called a build event, and this will be uh, in late September, and it's going to be the Wisconsin Be Local community will be partnering with the Be Locals throughout the Midwest to host, we're looking at right now a half day, could potentially be a full day uh, workshop, again, addressing many of these topics that have been brought up today within your business. So it, uh, there will be a fee to attend. We don't know what that is yet, um, but Sarah and I are on the planning committee representing Wisconsin. This is going to be a really nice opportunity to interface and interact with other certified bees across Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, Missouri, Ohio, I think. Um, I don't remember if there's any other states that are part of it, but we'll all be together working through um, workshops and programming tied to several of the key topics we discussed today. So stay tuned for more information on that. And then this is not a B Corp specific event, but on March 8th for International Women's Day, our Women in Sustainability group in the state of Wisconsin will be hosting a women's sustainability program. So this is open to all women who are interested in learning more. It's a free event, a free program. We'll be talking about the sustainable development goals. And we've got two amazing speakers who will be talking about the work that they're doing within the green building and sustainability space. So um, please feel free to attend that event as well. And now I'd like to go back. Mary wants us to know, are there other questions folks have about becoming a certified B Corp? Because we do have some other slides. And so we just want to see um, if there are any other questions in the chat that we can answer right now about becoming a certified B Corp. 
we do have resources on our Be Local Wisconsin website. So if you've not been to BeLocalWisconsin.org, that's our website. Please uh, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. And we do send out a Be Local Wisconsin e-newsletter. So you can go sign up for that newsletter on the Be Local Wisconsin website. And since we, I'm not hearing any questions, we're just going to go through these slides real quickly about who can certify, certify um, for-profit companies of any size, any industry or ge geographic region. Um, basically, when you do your B Impact assessment, it's based on your own customized individual information about your business. Okay, any legal structure, whether it's an LLC, a sole proprietor, or as we just talked about in Wisconsin, we now have the benefit corporation structure, and then companies. Um, over one year old, <laughs> special pending B Corp program for startups. So as I had said before, if you're starting a new business, you can come out the gate as a pending B Corp. Um, the requirements are the B Impact Assessment, and you have to score a minimum of 80 points out of 200. Um, it does take a while to go through and answer all the questions. There's a lot of questions. And based on how you answer the questions at the beginning, that will put additional questions in to your um, B Impact Assessment. and um, the part, this is actually an audited process. So if you just want to see kind of where your business fits, you could complete the B Impact Assessment and not actually submit it. If you want to submit it, I would say, um, make sure that the information you're giving is accurate because you will have to be able to provide documentation, which is the auditing function of completing the B Impact Assessment and why it's a certified process. Does that, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Um, once you have completed, put together your B Impact Assessment, you have to meet legal requirements. Those legal requirements are spelled out on the B Impact, uh, on the B Labs website. Um, I don't know if we have a link to it. Maybe Sarah could share that. It's really, they've done a great job providing resources. So if you're an LLC, there's specific language you would add into your articles of incorporation, or depending upon how you're organized, there's different language you would need to use to make it so that the legal requirement is met. And what that basically means is your legal requirement states that if you were to sell your business or your business was to be bought by somebody else, the structure would not change, the B Corp structure would not change, okay? Um, and then, yes, you sign the Declaration of Interdependence. That's what we were talking about way back in the beginning when August and I were talking about businesses coming to us who want to support other B Corp businesses. We all rise together. Um, and so you, you were part of this movement. And so the goal is that when you go to recertify, one of the questions B-Lab asks is about your supply chain. And they ask you how many of the businesses that you're provide, getting services from, so you're purchasing services from, how many of those businesses are certified B Corps or women owned or minority owned? And that's one of the questions they ask you because they want to know if, again, you're putting your money for your business where your values are. Next slide, Mary. Uh, let's see, meeting the performance requirements. There's five areas that you, you are, uh, your information is put into, community, environment, workers, governance, and consumers. And so every business, again, is a little bit different. So some businesses may have like really high community stores, and they may have a very small worker score. Um, for example, if your workers are subcontractors or you're a solo entrepreneur, you may not have any worker score, which is totally okay. Uh, it's really based on what's nice about the B Impact Assessment is it's based on the structure of your business. And because there's all these different models that exist, your business is put into the structure and then you're compared. So when you get your, ultimately you get your score, uh, Mary had mentioned best for the world. And so that's the top 5% of businesses in any category every year. So then at best for the world, you're actually compared across other businesses that are just like yours. So it's, it's actually, it's really very nice. It helps you to kind of understand where your business is, um, with, within the, the rubric, you know, because you, you can't compare a small business to Danon, right? Um, but you can compare two small businesses who have a, a light environmental footprint who are both consulting services. You can compare those. Next slide. Here's what the B Impact Assessment looks like. And as it says there, over 50,000 businesses have used this free confidential tool. So you can go in right now, create a login and user ID for yourself and go in and start answering questions. Doesn't mean you're submitting it yet, but you can just use this as a tool even to think about things you may not think about for your business. Next slide. Okay, this is a new tool that I love. It's called the SDG Action Manager. And what this tool is, it came out in, um, it was created in, yeah, it was created in 2019 as a partnership between um, the United Nations Global Compact and B Labs. And it came out in um, 
January, February of 2020. And so evolution marketing, we were a beta tester for it. And so what it does is it takes the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which have 169 targets or sub areas within the goals, and it maps all of those targets to business actions. And then those business actions are, the, so they get, you get questions like SDG number 13, which is climate action. If you go to that widget inside of it, um, it asks you questions about your climate action. And the cool thing is that this is built on the same platform that if you complete the B impact assessment, that same platform is used. So any information you put into the SDG action manager will actually ultimately map you in to your first B impact assessment. So it, the SDG action manager is created as a tool to help businesses think through their actions and how their actions are related to the sustainable development goals. It is not meant to be a certifier, okay? But if you want to get certified on the impacts of your actions, you complete the SDG Action Manager and maps your actions into the BIA, B Impact Assessment, and then you go through and you finish the B Impact Assessment. And then that's when you get the certification. Does that make sense? So it's, it's a tool to help you just to understand because the Sustainable Development Goals were new as of 2015, many businesses aren't familiar with how they work. And so this tool was created to help businesses to say, let's look at it from a holistic sustainability standpoint, all these different actions and how they're related and connected together. Next slide, please, Mary. Yeah, so here's an example of what it looks like on the back side. So you can see a score. Um, so this is a business, so this is Artisan Dentals, okay. Um, so you can see Artisan Dentals overall score. And then you can see that it says introducing the SDG Action Manager beta. Um, and so then Artisan Dental was able to go in and to do the beta. So it's all it all shows up in the same um, basic landing page for your B Impact Assessment, it's all back there. Okay, next slide. Now we've talked about the upcoming events, which is super exciting. And we are now going to turn it over to Sarah, my co-chair, and she is gonna talk about the rest of the B Corps in Wisconsin. Sarah, take it away. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, we wanted to just um, share with you all, um, you know, um, kind of uh, an example of all of the B Corps we have in Wisconsin. So you're hearing from five of us today. There are currently 17. Um, Stone Creek is our most recently certified one, although I know there's a few um, in the pending or pursuing certification, so I imagine this number um, might change pretty soon, um, which is super exciting. You know, over half of these have come in, um, I think, in like the last, or about half in the last three years, um, like Lisa was talking about the growth of the B Corp community, so um, awesome. Workshop Architects is here. Um, they hosted a fantastic event last um, fall. Um, um, and, um, you know, we're seeing that growth in Milwaukee and kind of really all over the state um, to grow this movement. Um, so I'm super excited to get to know and work with all of these B Corps. I think you'll be hearing from more um, as we hopefully have more in person events, potentially, um, you know, another virtual event. Um, but please, you know, if you know these businesses, you know, support these businesses, you know, ask questions. I think we all have kind of a, a different process of our um, certification and how we approach the B Corp um, movement, how that looks in all of our businesses. So I think um, our goal is to continue having these events and highlighting all of the businesses, uh, especially as um, we grow. Um, so, yeah, I think. Um, please, yeah, follow up there. And um, if you have any other questions, I guess, you know, I can answer maybe a couple more today. Otherwise, um, feel free to email uh, Lisa or I. Um, our emails are here. They'll be included in a mailing. Oh, here we go. Um, new question from Lori about the B Corps in Illinois. I bet I could probably find that out. <laughs> there, well, there are. Quick, uh... Yeah. There are, there's a, there's a group in Chicago land. I don't know how yeah. throughout the rest of Illinois, but I know about the Chicago group. Um, we've been interacting with folks from basically the greater Chicago land area for, well, since 2016 for me. Um, and I know Mary knows all about those folks too. And actually the gentleman who's leading our um, build event this fall, his name is Tim Frick, and he is the former chair of Be Local Illinois and he owns Mighty Bytes. So they're a, a computer, uh, a technology company in Chicago and they're doing a lot of great stuff there. Um, 
I don't know about the positive legislative environment helping to create sustainability in the movement um, from everything I understand that's happened down there. And Mary, feel free to tell me if this is wrong, but it's it's really more about mouth, it's word of mouth. It's really the folks who are certified B Corps. Um, they share with their supply chain, they share with their partners and they grow the movement. So I don't know, um, in Illinois, if the legislative environment helped or not, I don't, I don't, I'm going to say, I don't think so. I think it was really about who you knew because um, everyone I've met in Illinois kind of got brought into the movement by meeting somebody else who was part of the B Corp movement there. Mary, is that right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if they have benefit <clears throat> legislation passed yet in Illinois, um, but certainly, I mean, Sarah's put the chat, the link to the B local in Illinois in the chat box and um, they can certainly support, you know, any other questions specific to Illinois legislation and what's going on with the movement there. Any other questions from any of our attendees? If not, I think um, we'll probably wrap it up here. We'll be in touch um, with the slides and all the links that I, I've been sending in the, the chat. Again, feel free to um, let us know if you have any questions. Um, thank you all for, for joining us. It's been awesome. Thank you. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, everybody. Great to have you. Appreciate everybody joining. Thanks so much. Thanks.